Before a Crucifix by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org Here, down between the dusty trees, at this lank edge of haggard wood, women with labor-loosened knees, with gaunt backs bowed by servitude, stop, shift their loads, and pray and fare forth with souls easier for the prayer. The suns have branded black, the rains striped gray this piteous god of theirs. The face is full of prayers and pains, to which they bring their pains and prayers, lean limbs that show the laboring bones and ghastly mouth that gapes and groans. God of this grievous people wrought after the likeness of their race, by faces like thine own besought, thine own blind, helpless, eyeless face, I too, that have nor tongue nor knee for prayer, I have a word to thee. It was for this, then, that thy speech was blown about the world in flame? and men's souls shot up out of reach of fear or lust or thwarting shame, that thy faith over souls should pass as sea winds burning the gray grass. It was for this that prayers like these should spend themselves about thy feet, and with hard over-labored knees kneeling, these slaves of men should beat bosoms too lean to suckle sons and fruitless as their orisons. It was for this that men should make thy name a fetter on men's necks, poor men's made poor for thy sake, and women's withered out of sex. It was for this that slaves should be, thy word was passed to set men free. The nineteenth wave of the ages rolls now deathward, since thy death and birth. Hast thou fed full men's starved out souls? Hast thou brought freedom upon earth? Or are there less oppressions done in this wild world under the sun? Nay, if indeed thou be not dead, before thy tearing shrine be shaken, look down, turn usward, bow thine head. O thou that wast of God forsaken, look on thine household here, and see these that have not forsaken thee. Thy faith is fire upon their lips, thy kingdom golden in their hands. They scourge us with thy words for whips, they brand us with thy words for brands. The thirst that made thy dry throat shrink to their moist mouths commends the drink. The toothed thorns that bit thy brows lighten the weight of gold on theirs. Thy nakedness enrobes thy spouse with the soft sanguine stuff she wears, whose old limbs use for ointment yet thine agony and bloody sweat. The blinding buffets on thine head on their crowned heads confirm the crown, thy scourging dyes their raiment red, and with thy bands they fasten down for burial in the blood-bought field the nations by thy stripes unhealed. With iron for thy linen bands and unclean cloths for winding sheet they bind the people's nail-pierced hands they hide the people's nail-pierced feet, and what man or what angel known shall roll back the sepulchral stone? But these have not the rich man's grave to sleep in when their pain is done. These were not fit for God to save. As naked hell-fire is the sun in their eyes living, and when dead these have not where to lay their head. They have no tomb to dig and hide. Earth is not theirs that they should sleep. On all these tombless crucified, no lover's eyes have time to weep. So still, for all man's tears and creeds, the sacred body hangs and bleeds. 
Through the left hand a nail is driven, Faith, and another through the right, Forged in the fires of hell and heaven, Fear that puts out the eye of light, And the feet soiled and scarred and pale, Are pierced with falsehood for a nail. And priests against the mouth divine Push their sponge full of poison yet, And bitter blood for myrrh and wine. And on the same reed is it set wherewith before they buffeted the people's disanointed head. O sacred head, O desecrate, O labor-wounded feet and hands, O blood poured forth in pledge to fate of nameless lives in diverse lands, O slain and spent and sacrificed people, the gray grown speechless Christ. Is there a gospel in the red, old witness of thy wide-mouthed wounds? From thy blind, stricken, tongueless head, what desolate evangel sounds a hopeless note of hope deferred? What word, if there be any word? O son of man, beneath man's feet cast down, O common face of man, whereon all blows and buffets meet, O royal, O republican face of the people bruised and dumb, and longing till thy kingdom come. The soldiers and the high priests part thy vesture, all thy days are priced, and all the nights that eat thine heart. And that one seamless coat of Christ, the freedom of the natural soul, they cast their lots for to keep whole. No fragment of it save the name they leave thee For a crown of scorns Wherewith to mock thy naked shame And forehead bitten through with thorns And, marked with sanguine sweat and tears The stripes of eighteen hundred years And we seek yet if God or man Can loosen thee as Lazarus Bid thee rise up, Republican, and save thyself and all of us. But no disciple's tongue can say when thou shalt take our sins away. And mouldering now, and hoar with moss, between us and the sunlight swings the phantom of a Christless cross, shadowing the sheltered heads of kings, and making with its moving shade the souls of harmless men afraid. It creaks and rocks to left and right, Consumed of rottenness and rust, Worm-eaten of the worms of night, Dead as their spirits who put trust Round its base muttering as they sit In the time-cankered name of it. Thou in the day that breaks thy prison, people, Though these men take thy name, and hail and hymn thee re-arisen, Who made songs erewhile of thy shame, give thou not ear, For these are they whose good day was thine evil day. Set not thy hand unto their cross, give not thy soul up sacrificed, Change not the gold of faith for dross of Christian creeds that spit on Christ. Let not thy tree of freedom be, Regrafted from that rotting tree. This dead God, here against my face, Hath help for no man. Who has seen the good works of it, Or such grace as thy grace in it, Nazarene, As that from thy live lips which ran for man's sake, O thou son of man? The tree of faith engraft by priests, Puts its foul foliage out above thee, And round it feed man-eating beasts, Because of whom we dare not love thee. Though hearts reach back and memories ache, We cannot praise thee for their sake. O hidden face of man, Where over the years have woven a viewless veil, If thou wast verily man's lover, what did thy love or blood avail? Thy blood the priests make poison of, 
and in gold shekels coin thy love. So when our souls look back to thee they sicken, seeing against thy side, too foul to speak of or to see, the leprous likeness of a bride, whose kissing lips through his lips grown, leave their god rotten to their bone. When we would see thee, man, and know what heart thou hadst toward men indeed, lo, thy blood-blackened altars, lo, the lips of priests that pray and feed, while their own hell's worm curls and licks the poison of the crucifix, thou bad'st let children come to thee what children now but curses come what manhood in that god can be who sees their worship and is dumb no soul that lived loved wrought and died is this their carrion crucified nay if their god and thou be one if thou and this thing be the same, thou shouldst not look upon the sun. The sun grows haggard at thy name. Come down, be done with, cease, give o'er. Hide thyself, strive not, be no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tenebrae by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org At the chill high tide of the night, At the turn of the fluctuant hours, When the waters of time are at height, And a vision arose on my sight, The kingdoms of earth and the powers, in a dream, without lightning of eyes, I saw them, children of earth. Nations and races arise, each one after his wise, signed with the sign of his birth. Sound was none of their feet, light was none of their faces. In their lips breath was not, or heat, but a subtle murmur and sweet as of water in wan waste places pale as from passionate years years unassuaged of desire sang they soft in mine ears crowned with jewels of tears girt with girdles of fire a slow song beaten and broken as it were from the dust and the dead as of spirits a thirst unsloken as of things unspeakable spoken, as of tears unendurable shed. In the manifold sound remote, in the molten murmur of song, there was but a sharp soul note, alive on the night and afloat, the cry of the world's heart's wrong. As the sea in the straight sea caves, the sound came straightened and strange, a noise of the rending of graves, a tidal thunder of waves, the music of death and of change. We have waited so long, they say, for a sound of the god, for a breath, for a ripple of the refluence of day, for the fresh bright wind of the fray, for the light of the sunrise of death. We have prayed not we to be strong, to fulfill the desire of our eyes. Howbeit they have watched for it long, watched, and the night did them wrong, yet they say not of day, shall it rise? They are fearful and feeble with years, yet they doubt not of day if it be. Yea, blinded and beaten with tears, yea, sick with foresight of fears, yet a little and hardly they see. We pray not we to behold the latter august new birth, the young days purple and gold, and divine and re-arisen as of old, the sun-god freedom on earth. Peace and world's honor and fame, 
we have sought after none of these things. The light of a life like flame passing, the storm of a name shaking the strongholds of kings, nor fashioned of fire and of air, the splendor that burns on his head who was chiefest in ages that were, whose breath blew palaces bare, whose eye shone tyrannies dead, all these things in your day ye shall see, O our sons, and shall hold surely. But we in the gray twilight, for one thing we pray, in that day though our memories be cold, to feel on our brows as we wait an air of the morning, a breath from the springs of the east, from the gate whence freedom issues, and fate, sorrow, triumph and death from a land whereon time hath not trod where the spirit is boundless and bare and the world's rain breaks and the rod and the soul of a man which is god he adores without altar or prayer for alone of herself and her right she takes and alone gives grace and the colors of things lose light and the forms in the limitless white splendor of space without space. And the blossom of man from his tomb yearns open, the flower that survives. And the shadows of changes consume in the colorless passionate bloom of the live light made of our lives. Seeing each life given as a leaf of the manifold multiform flower, and the least among these, and the chief, as an ear in the red ripe sheaf stored for the harvesting hour. O spirit of man, most holy, the measure of things and the root, in our summers and winters a lowly seed, putting forth of them slowly thy supreme blossom and fruit. In thy sacred and perfect year, the souls that were parcel of thee in the labor and life of us here shall be rays of thy sovereign sphere, springs of thy motion shall be. There is the fire that was man, the light that was love, and the breath that was hope ere deliverance began, and the wind that was life for a span, and the birth of new things which is death. There, whosoever had light, and having for men's sake gave, all that warred against night, all that were found in the fight, swift to be slain and to save, undisbranched of the storms that disrude us, of the lures that enthrall and entice, the names that exalt and transmute us, the blood-bright splendor of Brutus, the snow-bright splendor of Christ. There all chains are undone, day there seems but as night, spirit and sense are as one, in the light not of star nor of sun, liberty there is the light. She, sole mother and maker, stronger than sorrow and strife, deathless though death overtake her, faithful though faith should forsake her, Spirit and Savior and Life. End of poem. Hymn of Man by Algernon Charles Swinburne. Read for LibriVox.org. Subtitled During the Session in Rome of the Ecumenical Council. In the gray beginning of years, in the twilight of things that began, the word of the earth in the ears of the world, was it God, was it man? The word of the earth to the spheres of her sisters, the note of her song, the sound of her speech in the ears of the starry and sisterly throng, was it praise or passion or prayer, was it love or devotion or dread? when the veils of the shining air first wrapped her jubilant head? 
when her eyes new-born of the night saw yet no star out of reach when her maiden mouth was alight with the flame of musical speech when her virgin feet were set on the terrible heavenly way and her virginal lids were wet with the dew of the birth of the day eyes that had looked not on time and ears that had heard not of death lips that had learnt not the rhyme of change and passionate breath the rhythmic anguish of growth and the motion of mutable things of love that longs and is loth and plume plucked hope without wings passions and pains without number and life that runs and is lame from slumber again to slumber the same race set for the same where runners outwear each other but running with lampless hands no man takes light from his brother till blind at the goal he stands ah did they know did they dream of it counting the cost and the worth the ways of her days did they seem then good to the new-souled earth did her heart rejoice and the might of her spirit exult in her then child yet no child of the night and motherless mother of men was it love break forth flower fashion a bird with gold on its wings lovely her first-born passion and impulse of first-born things was love that nestling indeed that under the plumes of the night was hatched and hidden as seed in the furrow and brought forth bright was it love lay shut in the shell world-shaped having over him there black world-wide wings that impel the might of the night through air and bursting his shell as a bird night shook through her sail-stretched vans and her heart as a water was stirred and its heat was the first-born man's for the waste of the dead void air took form of a world at birth and the waters and firmaments were and light and the life-giving earth the beautiful bird unbegotten that night brought forth without pain in the fathomless years forgotten where over the dead gods reign was it love life godhead or fate we say that the spirit is one that moved on the dark to create out of darkness the stars and the sun before the growth was the grower and the seed ere the plant was sown but what was seed of the sower and the grain of him whence was it grown foot after foot ye go back and travail and make yourselves mad blind feet that feel for the track where highway is none to be had therefore the god that ye make you is grievous and gives not aid because it is but for your sake that the god of your making is made thou and i and he are not gods made men for a span but god if a god there be is the substance of men which is man our lives are as pulses or pores of his manifold body and breath as waves of his sea on the shores where birth is the beacon of death we men the multiform features of man whatsoever we be recreate him of whom we are creatures and all we only are he not each man of all men is god but god is the fruit of the whole indivisible spirit and blood indiscernible body from soul not men's but man's is the glory of godhead the kingdom of time the mountainous ages made hoary with snows for the spirit to climb a god with the world inwound whose clay to his foot soul clings a manifold god fast bound as with iron of adverse things a soul that labors and lives an emotion a strenuous breath from the flame that its own mouth gives reillumed and refreshed with death in the sea whereof centuries are waves the live god plunges and swims his bed is in all men's graves 
but the worm hath not hold on his limbs. Night puts out not his eyes, nor time sheds change on his head. With such fire as the stars of the skies are the roots of his heart are fed. Men are the thoughts passing through it, the veins that fulfill it with blood, with spirit of sense to renew it as springs fulfilling a flood. Men are the heartbeats of man, the plumes that feather his wings, storm-worn since being began with the wind and thunder of things. Things are cruel and blind, their strength detains and deforms, and the wearying wings of the mind still beat up the stream of their storms. Still, as one swimming upstream, they strike out blind in the blast, in thunders of vision and dream, and lightnings of future and past. We are baffled and caught in the current, and bruised upon edges of shoals. As weeds or as reeds in the torrent of things are the wind-shaken souls. Spirit by spirit goes under, a foam-bell's bubble of breath, that blows and opens in sunder, and blurs not the mirror of death. For a worm or a thorn in his path is a man's soul quenched as a flame. For his lust of an hour or his wrath shall the worm and the man be the same. O God, sore stricken of things, they have wrought him a raiment of pain. Can a God shut eyelids and wings at a touch on the nerves of the brain? O shamed and sorrowful God, whose force goes out at a blow. What world shall shake at his nod? At his coming, what wilderness glow? What help in the work of his hands? What light in the track of his feet? His days are snowflakes or sands, with coal to consume him and heat. He is servant with change for Lord, and for wages he hath to his hire folly and force, and a sword that devours, and a ravening fire. From the bed of his birth to his grave he is driven as a wind at their will, lest change bow down as his slave, and the storm and the sword be still, lest earth spread open her wings to the sunward and sing with the spheres, lest man be master of things to prevail on their forces and fears. By the spirit are things overcome, they are stark, and the spirit hath breath. It hath speech, and their forces are dumb, it is living, and things are of death. But they know not the spirit for master, they feel not force from above. While man makes love to disaster, And woos desolation with love. Yea, himself too hath made himself chains, And his own hands plucked out his eyes, For his own soul only constrains him, His own mouth only denies. The herds of kings and their hosts And the flocks of their high priests Bow to a master whose face is a ghost's, O oh, thou that wast God, is it thou? Thou madest man in the garden, Thou temptedest the man, and he fell. Thou gavest him poison and pardon For blood and burnt offering to sell. Thou hast sealed thine elect to salvation, Fast locked with faith for the key. Make now for thyself expiation, And be thine atonement for thee. Ah, thou that darkenest heaven, Ah, thou that bringest a sword, By the crimes of thine hands unforgiven They beseech thee to hear them, O Lord. By the balefires of ages That burn for thine incense By creed and by rood, By the famine and passion That yearn and that hunger To find of thee food, 
by the children that asked at thy throne of the priests that were fat with thine hire for bread and thou gavest a stone for light and thou madest them fire by the kiss of thy peace like a snake's kiss that leaves the soul rotten at root by the savours of gibbets and stakes thou hast planted to bear to thee fruit by torture and terror and treason that make to thee weapons and wings by thy power upon men for a season made out of the malice of things o thou that hast built thee a shrine of the madness of man and his shame and hast hung in the midst for a sign of his worship the lamp of thy name that hast shown him for heaven in a vision a void world's shadow and shell and hast fed thy delight and derision with fire of beliefs as of hell that hast fleshed on the souls that believe thee the fang of the death-worm fear with anguish of dreams to deceive them whose faith cries out in thine ear by the face of the spirit confounded before thee and humbled in dust by the dread wherewith life was astounded and shamed out of sense of its trust by the scourges of doubt and repentance that fell on the soul at thy nod thou art judged o judge and the sentence has gone forth against thee, O God. Thy slave that slept is awake, thy slave but slept for a span. Yea, man thy slave shall unmake thee, who made thee lord over man. For his face is set to the east, his feet on the past and its dead. The sun re-arisen is his priest, and the heat thereof hallows his head. His eyes take part in the morning, his spirit outsounding the sea asks no more witness or warning from temple or tripod or tree. He hath set the centuries at union, the night is afraid at his name. Equal with life, in communion with death, he hath found them the same past the wall unsurmounted that bars out our vision with iron and fire he hath sent forth his soul for the stars to comply with and suns to conspire his thought takes flight for the centre wherewith it hath part in the whole the abysses forbid it not enter the stars make room for the soul space is the soul's to inherit the night is hers as the day. Lo, saith man, this is my spirit. How shall not the worlds make way? Space is thoughts, and the wonders thereof, and the secret of space. Is thought not more than the thunders and lightnings? Shall thought give place? Is the body not more than the vesture? The life not more than the meat? the will than the word or the gesture the heart than the hands or the feet is the tongue not more than the speeches the head not more than the crown and if higher than is heaven be the reach of the soul shall not heaven bow down time father of life and more great than the life it begat and began earth's keeper and heavens and their fate lives thinks and hath substance in man time's motion that throbs in his blood is the thought that gives heart to the skies and the springs of the fire that is food to the sunbeams are light to his eyes the minutes that beat with his heart are the words to which worlds keep chime and the thought in his pulses is part of the blood and the spirit of time. He saith to the ages, Give, and his soul forgoes not her share. Who are ye that forbid him to live, and would feed him with heavenlier air? Will ye feed him with poisonous dust, 
and restore him with hemlock for drink, till he yield you his soul up in trust, and have heart not to know or to think. He hath stirred him, and found out the flaw in his fetters, and cast them behind. His soul to his soul is a law, and his mind is a light to his mind. The seal of his knowledge is sure, the truth and his spirit are wed. Men perish, but man shall endure. Lives die, but the life is not dead. He hath sight of the secrets of season, the roots of the years and the fruits. His soul is at one with the reason of things that is sap to the roots. He can hear in their changes a sound as the conscience of consonant spheres. He can see through the years flowing round him the law lying under the years. Who are ye that would bind him with curses and blind him with vapor of prayer? Your might is as night that disperses when light is alive in the air. The bow of your godhead is broken, the arm of your conquest is stayed. Though ye call down God to bear token, for fear of you none is afraid. Will ye turn back times, and the courses of stars, and the season of souls? Shall God's breath dry up the sources that feed time full as it rolls? Nay, cry on him then till he show you a sign, till he lift up a rod. Hath he made not the nations to know him of old, if indeed he be God? Is no heat of him left in the ashes of thousands burnt up for his sake? Can prayer not rekindle the flashes that shone in his face from the stake? Cry aloud, for your God is a God and a Savior. Cry, make yourselves lean. Is he drunk or asleep, that the rod of his wrath is unfelt and unseen? Is the fire of his old loving kindness gone out, that his pyres are a cold? Hath he gazed on himself unto blindness, who made men blind to behold? Cry out, for his kingdom is shaken. Cry out, for the people blaspheme. Cry aloud till his godhead awaken. What doth he to sleep and to dream? Cry, cut yourselves, gash you with knives and with scourges, heap on to you dust. Is his life but as other gods' lives? Is not this the Lord God of your trust? Is not this the great God of your sires, that with souls and with bodies was fed, and the world was on flame with his fires? O oh, fools, he was God and is dead. He will hear not again the strong crying of earth in the ears as before, and the fume of his multitudes dying shall flatter his nostrils no more. By the spirit he ruled as his slave is he slain who was mighty to slay, and the stone that is sealed on his grave he shall rise not and roll not away. Yea, weep to him, lift up your hands, be your eyes as a fountain of tears. Where he stood there is nothing that stands, if he call there is no man that hears. He hath doffed his king's raiment of lies, now the wane of his kingdom is come. Ears hath he, and hears not, and eyes, and he sees not, and mouth, and is dumb. His red king's raiment is ripped from him naked, his staff broken down, and the signs of his empire are stripped from him shuddering, and where is his crown? And in vain by the wellsprings refrozen ye cry for the warmth of his sun. O God, the Lord God of thy chosen, thy will in thy kingdom be done. 
Kingdom and will hath he none in him left him, nor warmth in his breath. Till his corpse be cast out of the sun, will ye know not the truth of his death? Surely, ye say, he is strong, though the times be against him and men. Yet a little, ye say, and how long, till he come to show judgment again? Shall God then die as the beasts die? Who is it hath broken his rod? O God, Lord God of thy priests, rise up now and show thyself God. They cry out, thine elect, thine aspirants to heavenward, whose faith is as flame. O thou, the Lord God of our tyrants, they call thee their God by thy name. By thy name that in how fire was written, and burned at the point of thy sword. Thou art smitten, thou God, thou art smitten. Thy death is upon thee, O Lord. And the love song of earth, as thou diest, resounds through the wind of her wings. Glory to man in the highest, for man is the master of things. End of poem. The Pilgrims by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt The Pilgrims Who is your lady of love, O ye that pass, singing? And is it for sorrow of that which was, that ye sing sadly, or dream of what shall be? For gladly at once, and sadly it seems ye sing. Our lady of love by you is unbeholden, for hands she has none, nor eyes, nor lips, nor golden treasure of hair, nor face, nor form, but we, that love, we know her more fair than anything. Is she a queen, having great gifts to give? Yea, these, that whoso has seen her shall not live, except he serve her sorrowing with strange pain, travail and bloodshedding and bitterer tears, and when she bids die, he shall surely die and he shall leave all things under the sky, and go forth naked under sun and rain, and work and wait, and watch out all his years. Has she on earth no place of habitation? Age to age calling, nation answering nation, cries out, Where is she? And there is none to say, for if she be not in the spirit of man, for if in the inward soul she has no place, in vain they cry unto her, seeking her face in vain their mouths make much of her for they cry with vain tongues till the heart lives again o ye that follow and have ye no repentance for on your brows is written a mortal sentence a hieroglyph of sorrow a fiery sign that in your lives ye shall not pause or rest nor have the sure sweet common love nor keep friends and save days nor joy of life nor sleep these have we not who have one thing, the divine face and clear eyes of faith and fruitful breast. And ye shall die before your thrones be won, yea, and the changed world and the liberal sun shall move and shine without us, and we lie dead. But if she too move on earth and live, but if the old world, with all the old irons, rent laugh and give thanks, shall we be not content? Nay, we shall rather live, we shall not die, life being so little, and death so good to give. And these men shall forget you, yea, but we shall be a part of the earth and the ancient sea, and heaven high air august, and awful fire, and all things good, and no man's heart shall beat, but somewhat in it of our blood once shed, shall quiver and quicken, as now in us the dead blood of man slain, and the old same life's desire plants in their fiery footprints our fresh feet. But ye that might be clothed with all things pleasant, ye are foolish that put off the fair soft present, that clothe yourselves with the cold future air, when mother and father and tender sister and brother and the old live love that was shall be as ye, dust, and no fruit of loving life shall be. She shall be yet who is more than all these were, 
than sister or wife or father unto us or mother is this worth life is this to win for wages lo the dead mouths of the awful grey-grown ages the venerable in the past that is their prison in the outer darkness in the unopening grave laugh knowing how many as ye now say have said how many and all are fallen are fallen and dead shall ye dead rise and these dead have not risen not we but she who is tender and swift to save are ye not weary and faint not by the way seeing night by night devoured of day by day seeing hour by hour consumed in sleepless fire sleepless o oh ye too when shall ye too sleep we are weary in heart and head in hands and feet and surely more than all things sleep were sweet than all things save the inexorable desire which whoso knoweth shall neither faint nor weep is this so sweet that one were fain to follow is this so sure where all men's hopes are hollow even this your dream that by much tribulation ye shall make whole flawed hearts and bowed necks straight nay though our life were blind our death were fruitless not therefore were the whole world's high hope rootless but man to man nation would turn to nation and the old life live and the old great word be great pass on then and pass by us and let us be for what light think ye after life to see and if the world fare better will ye know and if man triumph who shall seek you and say enough of light is this for one life span that all men born are mortal but not men and we men bring death lives by night to sow that man may reap and eat and live by day end of poem this recording is in the public domain Armand Barbez by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage Fire out of heaven, a flower of perfect fire, That where the roots of life are had its root, And where the fruits of time are brought forth fruit, A faith made flesh, a visible desire, That heard the yet unbreathing years respire, And speech break forth of centuries that sit mute, beyond all feebler footprint of pursuit that touched the highest of hope and went up higher a heart love wounded where to love was law a soul reproachless without fear or flaw a shining spirit without shadow of shame a memory made of all men's love and awe being disembodied so thou be the same what need o soul to sign thee with thy name all woes of all men sat upon thy soul and all their wrongs were heavy on thy head with all their wounds thy heart was pierced and bled and in thy spirit as in a morning scroll the world's huge sorrows were inscribed by roll all theirs on earth who serve and faint for bread all banished men's all theirs in prison dead thy love and heart and sword hand for the whole this was my day of glory didst thou say when by the scaffold thou hadst hoped to climb for thy faith's sake they brought thee respite nay i shall not die then i have missed my day o hero o our help o head sublime thy day shall be commensurate with time end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cuia multum amavit by Algernon Charles Swinburne. Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage. Am I not he that hath made thee and begotten thee? I, God, the spirit of man? Wherefore now these eighteen years hast thou forgotten me from whom thy life began? Thy life blood and thy life breath and thy beauty, thy might of hands and feet thy soul made strong for divinity of duty and service which was sweet through the red sea brimmed with blood didst thou not follow me as one that walks in trance 
was the storm strong to break or the sea to swallow thee when thou wast free and france i am freedom god and man o france that plead with thee how long now shall i plead was i not with thee in travail and in need with thee thy sore travail and need thou wast fairest and first of my virgin vested daughters fairest and foremost thou and thy breast was white though thy hands were red with slaughters thy breast a harlot's now o foolish virgin and fair among the fallen a ruin where satyrs dance a garden wasted for beasts to crawl and brawl in what hast thou done with france where is she who bared her bosom but to thunder her brow to storm and flame and before her face was the red sea cloven in sunder and all its waves made tame and the surf wherein the broad-based rocks were shaking she saw far off divide at the blast of the breath of the battle blown and breaking and weight of wind and tide and the raven and the ruin of throned nations and every royal race and the kingdoms and kings from the state of their high stations that fell before her face yea great was the fall of them all that rose against her from the earth's old historied heights for my hands were fire and my wings as walls that fenced her mine eyes as pilot lights not as guerdons given of kings the gifts i brought her not strengths that pass away but my heart my breath of life o france o daughter i gave thee in that day yea the heart's blood of a very god i gave thee breathed in thy mouth his breath was my word as a man's having no more strength to save thee from this worth thing than death didst thou dream of it only the day that i stood nigh thee was all its light a dream when that iron surf roared backwards and went by thee unscathed of storm or stream when thy sons rose up and thy young men stood together one equal face of fight and my flag swam high as the swimming sea foam's feather laughing a lamp of light ah the lordly laughter and light of it that lightened heaven high the heaven's whole length ah the hearts of heroes pierced the bright lips whitened of strong men in their strength ah the banner poles the stretch of straightening streamers straining their full reach out ah the men's hands making true the dreams of dreamers the hopes brought forth in doubt ah the noise of horse the charge and thunder of drumming and swaying and sweep of swords ah the light that led them through of the world's life coming clear of its lies and lords by the lightning of the lips of guns whose flashes made plain the strayed world's way by the flame that left her dead old sins and ashes swept out of sight of day by thy children whose bare feet were shod with thunder their bare hands mailed with fire by the faith that went with them waking fear and wonder heart's love and high desire by the tumult of the waves of nations waking blind in the loud wide night by the wind that went on the world's waste waters making their marble darkness white as the flash of the flakes of the foam flared lamp-like leaping from wave to gladdening wave making wide the fast shut eyes of thraldom sleeping the sleep of the unclean grave by the fire of equality terrible devouring divine that brought forth good by the lands it purged and wasted and left flowering with bloom of brotherhood by the lips of fraternity that for love's sake uttered fierce words and fires of death but the eyes were deep as love's and the fierce lips fluttered with love's own living breath by thy weaponed hands brows helmed and bare feet spurning the bared head of a king by the storm of sunrise round thee risen and burning why hast thou done this thing thou hast mixed thy limbs with the son of a harlot a stranger mouth to mouth limb to limb thou bride of a god because of the bride's man danger to bring forth seed to him for thou thoughtest inly the terrible bridegroom wakes me when i would sleep to go the fire of his mouth consumes and the red kiss shakes me more bitter than a blow 
rise up my beloved go forth to meet the stranger put forth thine arm he saith fear thou not at all though the bridesman should be danger the bridesmaid should be death i the bridegroom am i not with thee o bridal nation o wedded france to strive to destroy the sins of the earth with divine devastation till none be left alive lo her growths of sons foliage of men and frondage broad boughs of the old world tree with iron of shame and with pruning hooks of bondage they are shorn from sea to sea lo i set wings to thy feet that have been wingless till the utter race be run till the priestless temples cry to the thrones made kingless are we not also undone till the immeasurable republic arise and lighten above these quick and dead and her awful robes be changed and her red robes whiten her warring robes of red but thou wouldst not saying i am weary and faint to follow let me lie down and rest and hast sought out shame to sleep with mire to wallow yea a much fouler breast and thine own hast made prostitute sold and shamed and bared it thy bosom which was mine and the bread of the word i gave thee hast soiled and shared it among these snakes and swine as a harlot thou wast handled and polluted thy faith held light as foam that thou sentest men thy sons thy sons imbruted to slay thine elder rome therefore o harlot i give thee to the accursed one by night to be defiled to thy second shame and a fouler than the first one that got thee first with child yet i know thee turning back now to behold me to bow thee and make thee bare not for sin's sake but penitence by my feet to hold me and wipe them with thine hair a sweet ointment of thy grief thou hast brought thy master and set before thy lord from a box of flawed and broken alabaster thy broken spirit poured and love offerings tears and perfumes hast thou given me to reach my feet and touch therefore thy sins which are many are forgiven thee because thou hast loved much end of poem this recording is in the public domain Genesis by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Genesis In the outer world that was before this earth, that was before all shape or space was born, before the blind first hour of time had birth, before night knew the moonlight or the morn, yea before any world had any light or anything called god or man drew breath slowly the strong sides of the heaving night moved and brought forth the strength of life and death in the sad shapeless horror increate that was all things and one thing without fruit limit or law where love was none nor hate where no leaf came to blossom from no root the very darkness that time knew not of nor god laid hand on nor was man found there ceased and was cloven in several shapes above light and night under and fire earth water and air sunbeams and starbeams and all colored things all forms and all similitudes began and death the shadow cast by life's wide wings and god the shade cast by the soul of man then between shadow and substance night and light then between birth and death in deeds and days the illimitable embrace in the amorous fight that of itself begets bears rears and slays the immortal war of mortal things that is labor and life and growth and good and ill the mild 
and Tiffany's that melt and kiss, the violent symphonies that meet and kill. All nature of all things began to be, but chiefliest in the spirit, beast or man, planet of heaven or blossom of earth and sea, the divine contraries of life began. For the great labor of growth, being many, is one. One thing, the white death and the ruddy birth, the invisible air and the all-beholden sun, and barren water and many childed earth. And these things are made manifest in men from the beginning forth unto this day. Time writes and life records them, and again death seals them lest the record pass away. For if death were not, then should growth not be, change, nor the life of good nor evil things. Nor were there night at all nor light to see, nor water of sweet nor water of bitter springs. For in each man, in each year that is born, are sown the twin seeds of the strong twin powers. The white seed of the fruitful, helpful morn, the black seed of the barren, hurtful hours. And he that of the black seed eateth fruit, to him the savour as honey shall be sweet. And he in whom the white seed hath struck root, he shall have sorrow and trouble and tears for meat. And him whose lips the sweet fruit hath made red, in the end men loathe and make his name a rod and him whose mouth on the unsweet fruit hath fed in the end men follow and know for very god and of these twain the black seed and the white all things come forth endured of men and done and still the day is great with child of night and still the black night labors with the sun. And each man in each year that lives on earth turns hither or thither, and hence or thence is fed. And as a man before was from his birth, so shall a man be after among the dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Walt Whitman in America by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Wallace Send but a song over sea for us, Heart of their hearts who are free, Heart of their singer to be for us More than our singing can be. Ours in the tempest at error, With no light but the twilight of terror, Send us a song over sea sweet smelling of pine leaves and grasses and blown as a tree through and through with the winds of the keen mountain passes and tender as sun-smitten dew sharp-tongued as the winter that shakes the wastes of your limitless lakes wide-eyed as the sea-lines blue o oh, strong-winged soul with prophetic lips hot with the blood-heats of song with tremor of heart-strings magnetic with thoughts as thunders in throng, with consonant ardours of chords that pierce men's souls as with swords and hail them hearing along. Make us too music, to be with us as a word from a world's heart warm, to sail the dark as a sea with us, full sailed out singing the storm, a song to put fire in our ears, whose burning shall burn up tears, whose sign bid battle reform. A note in the ranks of a clarion, a word in the wind of cheer, to consume as with lightning the carrion that makes time foul for us here. In the air that our dead things infest, a blast of the breath of the west, till eastway as westway is clear. Out of the sun beyond sunset, from the evening whence morning shall be, with the rollers in measureless onset, with the van of the storming sea, with the world-wide wind, with the breath that breaks ships driven upon death, with the passion of all things free, 
with the sea steeds footless and frantic white myriads for death to bestride in the charge of the ruining atlantic where deaths by regiments ride with clouds and clamours of waters with a long note shriller than slaughters on the furrowless fields world wide with terror with ardour and wonder with the soul of the season that wakes when the weight of a whole year's thunder in the tide stream of autumn breaks let the flight of the wide-winged word come over come in and be heard take form and fire for our sakes for a continent bloodless with travail here toils and brawls as it can and the web of it who shall unravel of all that peer on the plan would fain grow men but they grow not and fain be free but they know not one name for freedom and man one name not twain for division one thing not twain from the birth spirit and substance and vision worth more than worship is worth unbeheld unadored undivined the cause the centre the mind the secret and sense of the earth here as a weakling in irons here as a weanling in bands as a prey that the stake net environs our life that we looked for stands and the man-child naked and dear democracy turns on us here eyes trembling with tremulous hands it sees not what season shall bring to it sweet fruit of its bitter desire few voices it hears yet sing to it few pulses of hearts reaspire for sees not time nor forehears the noises of imminent years earthquake and thunder and fire when crowned and weaponed and curbless it shall walk without helm or shield the bare burnt furrows and herbless of war's last flame-stricken field till godlike equal with time it stand in the sun sublime in the godhead of man revealed round your people and over them light like raiment is drawn close as a garment to cover them wrought not of mail nor of lawn here with hope hardly to wear naked nations and bear swim sink strike out for the dawn chains are here and a prison kings and subjects and shame if the god upon you be arisen how should our songs be the same how in confusion of change how shall we sing in a strange land songs praising his name god is buried and dead to us even the spirit of earth freedom so have they said to us some with mocking and mirth some with heartbreak and tears and a god without eyes without ears who shall sing of him dead in the birth the earth god freedom the lonely face lightening the footprint unshod not as one man crucified only nor scourged with but one life's rod the soul that is substance of nations reincarnate with fresh generations the great god man which is god but in weariest of years and obscurest doth it live not at heart of all things the one god and one spirit a purest life fed from unstanchable springs within love within hatred it is and its seed in the stripe as the kiss and in slaves is the germ and in kings freedom we call it for holier name of the souls there is none surelier it labours if slowlier than the metres of star or of sun slowlier than life into breath surelier than time into death it moves till its labour be done till the motion be done and the measure circling through season and clime slumber and sorrow and pleasure vision of virtue and crime till consummate with conquering eyes a soul disembodied it rise from the body transfigured of time till it rise and remain and take station with the stars of the worlds that rejoice till the voice of its heart's exultation be as theirs an invariable voice by no discord of evil estranged by no pause by no breach in it changed by no clash in the chord of its choice it is one with the world's generations with the spirit the star and the sod with the kingless and king-stricken nations with the cross and the chain and the rod the most high the most secret most lonely 
the earth soul freedom that only lives and that only is god end of poem this recording is in the public domain Christmas Antiphons by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org by Shanna Burns. 1. In Church Thou whose birth on earth angels sang to men, while thy stars made mirth, Saviour at thy birth, this day born again. As this night was bright, with thy cradle ray, very light of light, turn the wild world's night to thy perfect day. God whose feet made sweet, those wild ways they trod, from thy fragrant feet, standing field and street, with the blood of God. God, whose breast is rest, in the time of strife, in thy secret breast, sheltering souls oppressed from the heat of life. God, whose eyes are skies, love lit as with spheres, by the lights that rise, to thy watching eyes, all but lights of tears. God, whose hearth hath part, in all grief that is, was not man's the dart, that went through thine heart and the wound not his. Where the pale souls wail, held in bonds of death, where all spirits quail, came thy Godhead pale still from human breath. Pale from life and strife, wan with manhood came, forth of mortal life, pierced as with a knife, scarred as with a flame. Thou the Word and Lord, in all time and space, heard, beheld, adored, with all ages poured forth before thy face. Lord, what worth in earth, drew thee down to die, what therein was worth, Lord, thy death and birth, what beneath thy sky. Light above all love, by thy love was lit, and brought down the dove, feathered from above with the wings of it. By the height of night was not thine the star, that led forth with might, by no worldly light, wise men from afar. Yet the wise men's eyes saw thee not more clear, than they saw thee rise, who in shepherd's guise, drew his poor men near. Yet thy poor endure, and are with us yet. Be thy name ashore, refuge for thy poor, whom men's eyes forget. Thou whose ways we praised, clear alike and dark, keep our works and ways, this and all thy days, safe inside thine ark. Who shall keep thy sheep, Lord, and lose not one, who save one shall keep, lest the shepherds sleep, who beside thy son. From the grave deep wave, from the sword and flame, thou, even thou, shalt save souls of king and slave, only by thy name. Light not born with morn, or her fires above, Jesus, virgin born, held of men in scorn, turn their scorn to love. Thou whose face gives grace, as the sun's doth heat, let thy sunbright face, light in time and space, here beneath thy feet. Bid our peace increase, thou that maddest morn, Bid oppression cease, bid the night be peace, bid the day be born. 2. Outside Church We whose days and ways, all the night makes dark, what day shall we praise, of these weary days, that our life drops mark? We whose mind is blind, fed with hope of naught, waste of warm mankind, without heart or mind, without meat or thought. We with strife of life, worn till all life cease, want a wet old knife, Sharpening strife on strife, how should we love peace? Ye whose meat is sweet, and your wine cup red, us beneath your feet, hunger grinds as wheat, grinds to make you bread. Ye whose night is bright, with soft rest and heat, clothed like day with light, us the naked night slays from street to street. Hath your God no rod, that ye tread so light, man on us as God, God as man hath trod, trod us down with might. We that one by one bleed from either's rod, what for us hath done, man beneath the sun, what for us hath God? We whose blood is food, given your wealth to feed, from the Christless rude, red with no God's blood, but with man's indeed. How shall we that see, night long overhead, like the flowerless tree, nailed whereon as we, were our fathers dead? We whose ear can hear, not whose tongue can name, Famine, ignorance, fear, bleeding tear by tear, year by year of shame. Till the dry life die, out of bloodless breast, out of beamless eye, out of mouth that cry, till death feed with rest. How shall we as ye, though ye bid us pray, though ye call can we, hear you call or see, 
though ye show us day. We whose name is shame, we whose souls won't bear, shall we call the same, God as ye by name, teach our lips your prayer. God forgive and give, for his sake who died, nay for ours who live, how shall we forgive thee then on our side? We whose right to light, heaven's high noon denies, whom the blind beams smite, that for you shine bright, and but burn our eyes. With what dreams of beams shall we build up day, at what sourceless streams seek to drink in dreams, ere they pass away? In what street shall meet, at what market place, your feet and our feet, with one goal to greet, having run one race? What one hope shall ope, for as all as one, one same horoscope, where the soul sees hope that outburns the sun. At what shrine what wine, at what board what bread, salt as blood or brine, shall we share in sign, how we poor were fed. In what hour what power, shall we pray for morn, if your perfect hour, when all day bears flower, not for us is born. 3. Beyond Church Ye that weep in sleep, souls and bodies bound, ye that all night keep, watch for change and weep, that no change is found. Ye that cry and die, and the world goes on, without ear or eye, and the days go by, till all days are gone. Man shall do for you, men the sons of man, what no God would do, that they sought unto, while the blind years ran. Brotherhood of good, equal laws and rights, freedom whose sweet food, feeds the multitude, all their days and nights. With the bread full fed, of her body blessed, and the soul's wine shed, from her table spread, where the world is guest. Mingling me and thee, when light light of eyes, flash through thee and me, truth shall make us free, liberty make wise. These are they whom day, follows and gives light, whence they see to slay, night and burn away, all the seed of night. What of thine and mine, what of want and wealth, when one faith is wine, for my heart and thine, and one draught is health. For no sect elect, is the soul's wine poured, and her table decked, whom should man reject, from man's common board. Gods refuse and choose, grudge and sell and spare, none shall man refuse, none of all men lose, none leave out of care. No man's might of sight, knows that hour before, no man's hand hath might, to put back that light, for one hour the more. Not though all men call, kneeling with void hands, shall they see light fall, till it come for all, tribes of men and lands. No desire brings fire, down from heaven by prayer, through man's vain desire, hang faith's windstruck lair, out in tuneless air. One hath breath and saith, what the tune shall be, time who puts his breath, into life and death, into earth and sea. To and fro years flow, fill their tides and ebb, as his fingers go, weaving to and fro, one unfinished web. All the range of change hath its bounds therein, all the lives that range, all the byways strange, named of death or sin. Star from far to star, speaks and white moons wake, watchful from afar, what the night's ways are, for the morning's sake. Many names and flames pass and flash and fall, night begotten names, and the night reclaims, as she bear them all. But the sun is one, and the sun's name right, and when light is none, saving of the sun, all men shall have light. All shall see and be, parcel of the morn, a though blind were we, none shall choose but see, when that day is born. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A New Year's Message by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage To Joseph Mazzini Send the stars light, but send not love to me. Shelley Out of the dawning heavens that hear Young wings and feet of the new year Move through their twilight and shed round Soft showers of sound, Soothing the season with sweet rain, If greeting come to make me fain, What is it I can send again? I know not if the year shall send tidings to usward as a friend, and salutation and such things bear on his wings. As the soul turns and thirsts unto with hungering eyes and lips that sue, for that sweet food which makes all new, 
i know not if his light shall be darkness or else light verily i know but that it will not part heart's faith from heart truth from the trust in truth nor hope from the sight of days unscaled that ope beyond one poor year's horoscope that faith in love which love's self gives o master of my spirit lives having in presence unremoved thine head beloved the shadow of thee the semitone of thy voice heard at heart and known the light of thee not set nor flown seas lands and hours can these divide love from love's service side from side though no sound pass nor breath be heard of one good word to send back words of trust to thee were to send wings to love when he with his own strong wings covers me who shall teach singing to the spheres or motion to the flight of years let soul with soul keep hand in hand and understand as in one same abiding place we keep one watch for one same face to rise in some short sacred space and all space midway is but not to keep true heart from faithful thought as under twilight stars we wait by time's shut gate till the slow soundless hinges turn and through the depth of years that yearn the face of the republic burn end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mater Dolorosa by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage Citoyen, lui dit en Gérard, ma mère, c'est la République, les Miserables. Who is this that sits by the way, by the wild wayside, in a rent-stained raiment, the robe of a cast-off bride, in the dust, in the rainfall sitting, with soiled feet bare, with the night for a garment upon her, with torn wet hair. She is fairer of face than the daughters of men, and her eyes, worn through with her tears, are deep as the depth of skies. This is she, for whose sake being fallen, for whose abject sake, earth groans in the blackness of darkness, and men's hearts break. This is she, for whose love, having seen her, the men that were, poured life out as water and shed their souls upon air this is she for whose glory their years were counted as foam whose face was light upon greece was a fire upon rome is it now not surely a vain thing a foolish and vain to sit down by her mourn to her serve her partake in the pain she is gray with the dust of time on his manifold ways where her faint feet stumble and falter through year-long days. Shall she help us all, O oh, fools, give fruit or give fame, who herself is a name despised, a rejected name? We have not served her for guerdon, if any do so, that his mouth may be sweet with such honey, we care not to know. We have drunk from a wine unsweetened, a perilous cup, a draught very bitter, the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers took counsel together to smite her and slay, and the blood of her wounds is given us to drink today. Can these bones live, or the leaves that are dead leaves bud? Or the dead blood drawn from her veins be in your veins blood? Will ye gather up water again that was drawn and shed? In the blood is the life of the veins, and her veins are dead. For the lives that are over are over, and the past things past. She had her day, and it is not was first, and is last. Is it nothing unto you, then, all ye that pass by, if her breath be left in her lips, if she live now or die? Behold now, O people, and say if she be not fair, whom your fathers followed to find her with praise and prayer, and rejoiced having found her, though roof they had none or bread. But ye care not. What is it to you if her day be dead? It was well with our fathers. Their sound was in all men's lands. There was fire in their hearts, and the hunger of fight in their hands. Naked and strong they went forth in her strength like flame, 
for her loves and her namesake of old her republican name but their children by kings made quiet by priests made wise love better the heat of their hearths than the light of her eyes are they children of these thy children indeed who have sold o golden goddess the light of thy face for gold are they sons indeed of the sons thy dayspring of hope whose lives are in fife of an emperor whose souls of a pope hide then thine head o beloved thy time is done thy kingdom is broken in heaven and blind thy son what sleep is upon you to dream she indeed shall rise when the hopes are dead in her heart as the tears in her eyes if ye sing of her dead will she stir if ye weep for her weep come away now leave her what hath she to do but sleep but ye that mourn are alive and have years to be and life is good and the world is wiser than we yea wise is the world and mighty with years to give and years to promise but how long shall it live and foolish and poor is faith and her ways are bare till she find the way of the sun and the morning air in that hour shall this dead face shine as the face of the sun and the soul of man and her soul and the world's be one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mater Triumphalis by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage Mother of man's time-travelling generations, Breath of his nostrils, heart-blood of his heart, God above all gods, worshipped of all nations, Light above light, law beyond law, thou art. Thy face is as a sword smiting in sunder, Shadows and chains and dreams and iron things, the sea is dumb before thy face the thunder silent the skies are narrower than thy wings angels and gods spirit and sense thou takest in thy right hand as drops of dust or dew the temples and towers of time thou breakest his thoughts and words and works to make them new all we have wandered from thy ways have hidden eyes from thy glory and ears from calls they heard called of thy trumpets vainly called and chidden scourged of thy speech and wounded of thy word we have known thee and have not known thee stood beside thee felt thy lips breathe set foot where thy feet trod loved and renounced and worshipped and denied thee as though thou wert but as another god one hour for sleep we said and yet one other all day we served her and who shall serve by night not knowing of thee thy face not knowing o mother o light where through the darkness is as light men that forsook thee hast thou not forsaken races of men that knew not hast thou known nations that slept thou hast doubted not to waken worshippers of strange gods to make thine own all old grey histories hiding thy clear features o secret spirit and sovereign all men's tales creeds woven of men thy children and thy creatures they have woven for vestures of thee and for veils thine hands without election or exemption feed all men fainting from false peace or strife o thou the resurrection and redemption the godhead and the manhood and the life thy wings shadow the waters thine eyes lighten the horror of the hollows of the night the depths of the earth and the dark places brighten under thy feet whiter than fire is white death is subdued to thee and hell's bands broken where thou art only is heaven who hears not thee time shall not hear him when men's names are spoken a nameless sign of death shall his name be deathless shall be the death the name be nameless sterile of stars his twilight time of breath with fire of hell shall shame consume him shameless and dying all the night darken his death the years are as thy garments the world's ages as sandals bound and loosed from thy swift feet time serves before thee as one that hath for wages praise or shame only bitter words are sweet thou sayest well done and all a century kindles 
again thou sayest depart from sight of me and all the light of face of all men dwindles and the age is as the broken glass of thee the night is as a seal set on men's faces on faces fallen of men that take no light nor give light in the deeps of the dark places blind things incorporate with the body of night their souls are serpents winter-bound and frozen their shame is as a tame beast at their feet couched their cold lips deride thee and thy chosen their lying lips made grey with dust for meat then when their time is full and days run over the splendour of thy sudden brow made bare darkens the morning thy bared hands uncover the veils of light and night and the awful air and the world naked as a new-born maiden stands virginal and splendid as at birth with all thine heaven of all its light unladen of all its love unburdened all thine earth for the utter earth and the utter air of heaven and the extreme depth is thine and the extreme height shadows of things and veils of ages riven are as men's kings unkingdomed in thy sight through the iron years the centuries brazen gated by the ages barred unpenetrable doors from the evening to the morning have we waited should thy foot haply sound on the awful floors the floors untrodden of the sun's feet glimmer the star-stricken pavements of the night do the lights burn inside the lights wax dimmer on the festal faces withering out of sight the crowned heads lose the light on them it may be dawn is at hand to smite the loud feast dumb to blind the torchlit centuries till the day be the feasting kingdoms till thy kingdom come shall it not come deny they are dissemble is it not even as lightning from on high now and though many a soul close eyes and tremble how should they tremble at all who love thee as i i am thine harp between thy hands o mother all my strong cords are drained with love of thee we grapple in love and wrestle as each with other wrestle the wind and the unreluctant sea i am no courtier of thee sober suited who loves a little for a little pay me not thy winds and storms nor thrones disrooted nor molten crowns nor thine own sins dismay sinned hast thou some time therefore art thou sinless stained hast thou been who art therefore without stain even as man's soul is kin to thee but kinless thou in whose womb time sows the all-various grain i do not bid thee spare me o dreadful mother i pray thee that thou spare not of thy grace how were it with me then if ever another should come to stand before thee in this my place i am the trumpet at thy lips thy clarion full of thy cry sonorous with thy breath the graves of souls born worms and creeds grown carrion thy blast of judgment fills with fires of death thou art the player whose organ keys are thunders and i beneath thy foot the pedal pressed thou art the ray whereat the rent night sunders and i the cloudlet borne upon thy breast i shall burn up before thee pass and perish as haze in sunrise on the red sea line but thou from dawn to sunsetting shalt cherish the thoughts that led in souls that lighted mine reared between night and noon in truth and error each twilight travelling bird that trills and screams sickens at midday nor can face for terror the imperious heavens inevitable extremes i have no spirit of skill with equal fingers at sign to sharpen or to slacken strings i keep no time of song with gold-perched singers and chirp of linnets on the wrists of kings i am thy storm thrush of the days that darken thy petrel in the foam that bears thy bark to port through night and tempest if thou hearken my voice is in thy heaven before the lark my song is in the mist that hides thy morning my cry is up before the day for thee i have heard thee and beheld thee and give warning before thy wheels divide the sky and sea birds shall wake with thee voiced and feathered fairer to see in summer what i see in spring i have eyes and heart to endure thee o thunder-bearer and they shall be who shall have tongues to sing i have love at least and have not fear and part not from thine unnavigable and wingless way thou tarriest and i have not said thou art not nor all thy night long have denied thy day 
darkness to daylight shall lift up thy peon hill to hill thunder veil cry back to veil with wind notes as of eagles escalian and sappho singing in the nightingale sung to by mighty sons of dawn and daughters of this night's song thine ear shall keep but one that supreme song which shook the channeled waters and called thee skyward as god calls the sun come though all heaven again be fire above thee though death before thee come to clear thy sky let us but see in his thy face who love thee yea though thou slay us arise and let us die end of poem this recording is in the public domain a marching song by Algernon Charles Swinburne, read for LibriVox.org by Corinne LePage. We mix from many lands, we march for very far. In hearts and lips and hands, our staffs and weapons are the light we walk in, dark and sun and moon and star. It doth not flame and wane with years and spheres that roll. Storm cannot shake nor stain the strength that makes it whole, the fire that moulds and moves it of the sovereign soul we are they that have to cope with time till time retire we live on hopeless hope we feed on tears and fire time foot by foot gives back before our sheer desire from the edge of harsh derision from discord and defeat from doubt and lame division we pluck the fruit and eat and the mouth finds it bitter and the spirits sweet we strive with time at wrestling till time be on our side and hope our plumeless nestling a full-fledged eaglet ride down the loud length of storm its windward wings divide we are girt with our belief clothed with our will and crowned hope fear delight and grief before our will give ground their calls are in our ears as shadows of dead sound all but the heart forsakes us all fails us but the will keen trees and tracks and takes us in pits for blood to fill friend falls from friend and faith for faith lays wait to kill out under moon and stars and shafts of the urgent sun whose face on prison bars and mountain heads is one our march is everlasting till time's march be done whither we know and whence and dare not care where through desires that urge the sense fears changing old with new perils and pains beset the ways we press into earth gives us thorns to tread and all her thorns are trod through lands burnt black and red we pass with feet unshod whence we would be man shall not keep us nor man's god through the great desert beasts howl at our backs by night and thunder forging priests blow their dead bale fires bright and on their broken anvils beat out bolts for fight inside their sacred smithies though hot the hammer rings their steel links snap like withies, their chains like twisted strings, their surest fetters are as plighted words of kings. O nations undivided, O single people and free, we dreamers we derided, we mad blind men that see, we bear ye witness ere ye come that ye shall be. Ye sitting among tombs, ye standing round the gate, whom fire-mouthed war consumes, or cold-lipped peace bids wait, all tombs and bars shall open every grave and gate the locks shall burst in sunder the hinges shrieking spin when time whose hand is thunder lays hand upon the pin and shoots the bolts reluctant bidding all men in these eyeless times and earless shall these not see and hear and all their hearts burn fearless that were a frost for fear is day not hard upon us yea not our day near france from its grey dejection make manifest the red tempestuous resurrection of thy most sacred head break thou the covering cerecloths rise up from the dead and thou whom sea walls sever from lands unwalled with sea wilt thou endure for ever o milton's england these thou that was his republic wilt thou clasp thy knees these royalties rust eaten these worm corroded lies that keep thine head storm beaten and sunlight strength of eyes from the open heaven and air of intercepted skies these princelings with gauze winglets that buzz in the air unfurled these summer swarming kinglets these thin worms crowned and curled 
that bask and blink and warm themselves about the world these fanged meridian vermin shrill gnats that crowd the dusk night moths whose nestling ermine smells foul of mould and musk blind flesh flies hatched by dark and hampered in their husk these honours without honour these ghost-like gods of gold this earth that wears upon her to keep her heart from cold no memory more of men that brought it fire of old these limbs supine unbuckled in rottenness of rest these sleepy lips blood-suckled and satiate of thy breast these dull wide mouths that drain thee dry and call thee blessed these masters of thee mindless that wear thee out of mind these children of thee kindless that use thee out of kind whose hands strew gold before thee and contempt behind who have turned thy name to laughter thy sea-like sounded name that now none hearkens after for faith in its free fame who have robbed thee of thy trust and given thee their shame these hours that mock each other these years that kill and die are these thy gains our mother for all thy gains throw by is this that end whose promise made thine heart so high with empire and with treason the first right hand made fast but in man's nobler season to put forth help the last love turns from thee and memory disavows thy past lest thine own sea disclaim thee lest thine own sons despise lest lips shoot out that name thee and seeing thee men shut eyes take thought with all thy people turn thine head and rise turn thee lift up thy face what ails thee to be dead ask of thyself for grace seek of thyself for bread and who shall starve or shame thee blind or bruise thine head the same sun in thy sight the same sea in thine ears that saw thine hour at height that sang thy song of years behold and hearken for thee knowing thy hopes and fears o people o perfect nation o england that shall be how long till thou take station how long till thralls live free how long till all thy soul be one with all thy sea ye that from south to north ye that from east to west stretch hands of longing forth and keep your eyes from rest lo when ye will we bring you gifts of what is best from the awful northland pines that skirt their wan dim seas to the ardent apennines and sun-struck pyrenees when frost on all their frondage bites the blossoming trees the leaves look up for light for heat of helpful air the trees of oldest height and thin storm-shaken hair seek with gaunt hands up heavenward if the sun be there the woods where souls walk lonely the forests girt with night desire the day-star only and firstlings of the light not seen of slaves nor shining in their master's sight we have the morning star o foolish people o kings with us the day springs are even all the fresh day springs for us and with us all the multitude of things o sorrowing hearts of slaves we heard you beat from far we bring the light that saves we bring the morning star freedom's good things we bring you whence all good things are with us the winds and fountains and lightnings live in tune the morning-coloured mountains that burn into the noon the mists mild veil on valleys muffled from the moon the thunder darkened highlands and lowlands hot with fruit sea bays and shoals and islands and cliffs that foil man's foot and all the flower of large-limbed life and all the root the clangour of sea eagles that teach the morning mirth with baying of heaven's beagles that seek their prey on earth by sounding strait and channel gulf and reach and firth with us the fields and rivers the grass that summer thrills the highs where morning quivers the peace at heart of hills the sense that kindles nature and the soul that fills with us all natural sights all notes of natural scale with us the starry lights with us the nightingale with us the heart and secret of the worldly tale the strife of things and beauty the fire and light adored truth and life lightening duty love without crown or sword that by his might and godhead makes man god and lord these have we these are ours that no priests give nor kings the honey of all these flowers the heart of all these springs ours for where freedom lives not there live no good things rise ere the dawn be risen 
come and be all souls fed from field and street and prison come for the feast is spread live for the truth is living wake for the night is dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain sienna by algernon charles swinburne read for LibriVox.org by pamela nagami inside this northern summer's fold the fields are full of naked gold broadcast from heaven on lands it loves the green veiled air is full of doves soft leaves that sift the sunbeams let light on the small warm grasses wet fall in short broken kisses sweet and break again like waves that beat round the sun's feet but i for all this english mirth of golden shod and dancing days and the old green girt sweet-hearted earth desire what here no spell can raise far hence with holier heavens above the lovely city of my love bathes deep in the sun-satiate air that flows round no fair thing more fair her beauty bare there the utter sky is holier there more pure the intense white height of air more clear men's eyes that mine would meet and the sweet springs of things more sweet there for this one warm note of doves a clamour of a thousand loves storms the night's ear the day's assails from the tempestuous nightingales and fills and fails o gracious city well beloved italian and a maiden crowned sienna my feet are no more moved toward thy strange shapen mountain bound but my heart in me turns and moves o lady loveliest of my loves toward thee to lie before thy feet and gaze from thy fair fountain seat up the sheer street and the house midway hanging sea that saw st catherine bodily felt on its floors her sweet feet move and the live light of fiery love burn from her beautiful strange face as in the sanguine sacred place where in pure hands she took the head severed and with pure lips still red kissed the lips dead for the outer land is sad and wears a raiment of a flaming fire and the fierce fruitless mountain stairs climb yet seem wroth and loath to aspire climb and break and are broken down and through their clefts and crests the town looks west and sees the dead sun lie in sanguine death that stains the sky with angry dye and from the war-worn wastes without in twilight in the time of doubt one sound comes of one whisper where moved with low motions of slow air the great trees nigh the castle swing in the sad colored evening ricorditi di me che son la pia that small sweet word alone is not yet gone ricorditi di me the sound soul out of deep dumb days remote across the fiery and fatal ground comes tender as a hurt bird's note to where a ghost with empty hands a woe-worn ghost her palace stands in the mid-city where the strong bells turn the sunset air to song and the towers throng with other face with speech the same a mightier maiden's likeness came late among morning men that slept a sacred ghost that went and wept white as the passion wounded lamb saying ah remember me that am italia from deep sea to sea earth heard earth knew her that this was she ricorditi end of poem this recording is in the public domain cor cordium by algernon charles swinburne read for librivox dot org by nemo cor cordium o heart of hearts the chalice of love's fire hid round with flowers and all the bounty of bloom o wonderful and perfect heart 
for whom the lyrist liberty made life a liar o heavenly heart at whose most dear desire dead love living and singing cleft his tomb and with him risen and regent in death's room all day thy choral pulses rang full choir o heart whose beating blood was running song o soul things sweeter than thine own songs were help us for thy free love's sake to be free true for thy truth's sake for thy strength's sake strong till very liberty may clean and fair the nursing earth as a sepulchral sea and a poem this recording is in the public domain in san lorenzo by algernon charles swinburne read for LibriVox.org by nelson hay is thine hour come to wake o slumbering night hath not the dawn a message in thine ear though thou be stone and sleep yet shalt thou hear when the word falls from heaven let there be light thou knowest we would not do thee the despite to wake thee while the old sorrow and shame were near we spake not loud for thy sake and for fear lest thou shouldst lose the rest that was thy right the blessing given thee that was thine alone the happiness to sleep and to be stone nay we kept silence of thee for thy sake albeit we knew thee alive and left with thee the great good gift to feel not nor to see but will not yet thine angel bid thee wake end of poem this recording is in the public domain